the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So three factors we're examining tonight that have been responsible for the current state of the church and by extension the nation as seen prophetically in the vision of Ezekiel. Number one, the absence of genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, very quickly. Ready for number two? Very low level of discipleship. Oh, this is a concept you do not hear again in the body of Christ. Younger believers don't even know what this is. What is discipleship? Discipleship is the methodical approach. A scriptural and methodical approach to growth and maturity as far as spiritual things are concerned. The name, the doctrinal name given to the pathway that leads an individual who comes into Christ to now grow and have stature and maturity is discipleship. Discipleship is not a religious thing. People have made religion out of it, I understand. But intrinsically, discipleship is the methodical approach. Please look up. Did you know that the growth and the maturity of the saints was not supposed to be guesswork? Um, do we have any medical doctor here? Please stand, sir. Do we have any other medical doctor here? Any at all? Thank you. Did you by any means go to the same college of medicine with that lady? You're not sure. Now, how come both of you or all of you can accurately do the same thing, even though you've never met yourselves because of the formula that was used to train you? You didn't have to know yourselves. That means the manual is greater than the lecturers that taught you. So although you were from one region and you were from one region, but both of you are called doctors and you can actually meet for the first time in a surgery room and not doubt yourselves because of the dexterity of the manual that was used to train you. Now, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. How come when I call a man Christian A, stand up. Christian B, stand up. Christian C, stand up. And all three come to sit down. You cannot even understand what they are discussing. So what is wrong? There must be, we have to probe into the manual that has been used for that training. Or we have to probe into the sincerity of the lecturer. Please sit down. Please pay attention. There is, listen, there is a course content that is given for the maturity of the believers. And it is not an invention of any preacher. The course content that has already been predefined to make any believer become mature, the name of that course content is doctrine. Doctrine is the course content allocated for the building and the maturity of the saints. Doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a, a, a predefined body of knowledge that helps the student become something exact. Doctrina, a body of knowledge. Now, respectfully speaking, what happens, now, remember we agreed that all our teaching is not to point fingers. If you are pointing fingers at anybody, you are not part of us in this conference now. You have to understand. There is no tell them. We are all a family of faith. Very matured, very intelligent people who are as one body helping to solve what is wrong with that body. Please sit down. Are you learning? See, let me teach you something. 
The zenith of transformation is not enlightenment. It is love. We know you are most transformed not through the communication of knowledge alone. If your knowledge grows as your love depletes, it is not the Holy Spirit who is responsible for that building. Because if God builds you, the more you know, the more your love life rises to match your revelation. So that you dispense the truths that you know from a standpoint of love. The love factor is what validates that God taught you. Be learning all these things. This is a conference. Discipleship. Second Timothy chapter 3. My goodness. Wherever we stop tonight, we'll share the grace and come tomorrow. This is a school of the spirit. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. Very quickly if we can. Second Timothy. And that from a child. Everybody say child. So you are supposed to begin to learn the ways of God from a child. If you become an adult before you start, time is already against you. You have to create extra lessons to quickly because what you need to learn, you need to learn it on time. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture. Are we together? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. To 17 now. All scripture, he's still talking to that child, is given by God. By inspiration of God and is profitable for, please talk to me, for first doctrine before reproof. There cannot be reproof and correction when there is no basis. The basis is doctrine. Then from the lens of doctrine, we can now adjust the excesses. The excesses, correcting, the, this is why, let me balance this. Oh dear, we have other sessions. Let me not, please pray for me that we just... Do you know, maybe this may be a word from God to just help someone tonight. Not everybody has the grace to correct the body of Christ. Just because you see things going wrong does not mean you just stand up and start talking. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Listen. This is South Africa. Do you just go as a citizen and arrest anybody for doing wrong? There is an authorized system. Is that true? Licensed. And when they come, the first thing they show you is their license. Do you know what your license is? There is a requisite level of love you must have for the body. If not, you will never be given the grace to correct that body. You cannot correct the body from a standpoint of antagonism, from a standpoint of bitterness. Your motive is already corrupted yourself. Hmm. Everybody say discipleship. discipleship. Please shout it. Say discipleship. discipleship. Do you know why the educational systems in most of our top universities globally work? Harvard, Yale, Oxford. Do you know why? Because they insist on maintaining standards of what is being taught. They have all kinds of quality control systems that they will not bend to. So you can trust the products that come out from there. The primary reason why the educational systems, respectfully speaking, in Africa continue to plunge is because there is no insistence on, there is no standardization. So all kinds of compromises can come. That is how it is spiritually. Can I be honest with you? When you understand doctrine, you see, the thing about spiritual growth and knowledge is that believers do, do not just learn anything spiritual to grow. There is a sequence. When a believer comes to Christ and gets born again, the next thing to teach that believer, doctrinally speaking, is not success. If you teach that person success from that standpoint, you have only given the flesh what to manifest. That person will most likely not last. That person needs to understand the rudiments 
of godliness, repentance from dead works, the power of character. Now, when you teach that person, by the time you come into the series on success, there is already a background. He knows you have tamed the flesh. So, the teaching on success now comes to a mature believer who understands the purpose of influence, the purpose of wealth. We cannot randomly teach anything just because we find it from scripture. Look at me, please. Again, let me use an example with our educational system. Assume with me, for instance, that you find a student in the university, in college. Today, you run to the faculty of engineering for lecture. Tomorrow, you run to the faculty of medicine or the college of medicine. Next, tomorrow, you go to art. Are you in the university? Yes. Will you graduate? Because your knowledge is not methodical. You are in the system, but you are not growing. When they award you a certificate or a degree, it's because you have stayed in keeping with the, the sequence of the growth across a field of study. They don't give you a degree for everything. They give you a degree for the field that you chose to stay on course for. Listen to me. Apostle Felix, if an average believer is called right now at random, let's call an average believer who has been in church for say two years, three years, five years, and you stand here and we interview you based on the foundational doctrines of scripture, you will be surprised and even weep that the average believer does not even have an under... What do you know about prayer? What do you know about salvation? Can I get someone saved and hand him over to you and say, I will return back in two years. I should meet a general. I should meet a champion. Do you know how to... What is the next course? Are we blessed? That's why after this conference, you should come to meet your man of God and hug him and say, thank you, sir. Thank you for giving an opportunity for the body of Christ, not only in South Africa, but across. Can I be honest with you? Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. Every family problem was first a problem that was not solved by the church, which is the light. Nothing starts at a national level. Everything only manifests at a national level. It is very easy to change a territory. You change a nation by changing regions, by changing communities, by changing families, by working on the church. Africa is about the most religious continent across the globe. Am I right on that? And can I be honest with you? The average church in Africa attends, has at least contacts with a spiritual leader once or twice every week. If what we are producing is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord, there must be an unashamed examination. Let's examine the course content. Let's examine the state of the lecturer. First, there are other issues, but they are not as powerful as we make them. Satan knows this, and he will do anything to keep us arguing and fighting one another, addressing the issues that are the obvious, but not the right ones. doctrine. I've had the honor of praying for many institutions and many businesses and many companies and for some of them I see the dexterity around their administrative system. When I came in here, the excellence of your protocol, I saw all of the people are uh, 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 wonderful your, your, your whole reception team here. Do you know why these people are like that? They are trained. They didn't guess their way on what to do. Now, watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please look up if you can find it. Who asked him to come? Who asked him to come and pick it? Why didn't you come? Do you not love your pastor? Why didn't you come? It's not your jurisdiction. You were trained. Are you seeing this now? Anytime there is no training, there will be disorder. 
I just threw this arbitrarily. And he knows I put pressure on his office and his training. Now his ability to do this has proven that this man is a good shepherd. Please sit down. I was glad. Thank you. When they said unto me, you see why it's really, this should be the basis of your confidence when you invite people to church. You invite them with this passion, knowing that just one service. You see that now? And you tell them, please come to the house of God. You will find wisdom there. Listen, the church should not be or look like a nuisance to civilization. No. The contents that we give are profitable always. It's not just the spiritual lives of the people. We communicate ideas that transform people and eventually help people to build the nation. The church is not just some spiritual nuisance. No, we are a blessing to everybody. We are the principal shapers of the spiritual convictions of any territory. So there is a serious discipleship problem. We must examine the things that we teach. Hebrews chapter 6 talks to us about the doctrinal pillars of the Christian faith. Doctrinal pillars. Six of them it lists. And then it says let us go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation of doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands, resurrection, eternal judgment, etc. Hallelujah. We must be methodically built. Number three, let me hurry up for time. What is the third factor that is responsible for the decadence of the church like prophetically seen in the vision of Ezekiel? Are you ready for this? Number three, is that there are few models or references. Few models. In certain territories, there are almost no models. Few models or references that can inspire people and show people pragmatically how to be a Christian. Can I tell you this? Every territory strives to the degree to which they find models that reflect their aspirations. Business people excel because there are individuals who are seen as models. When a territory does not have models, men and women who have paid the price to become worthy references that you can draw from their lives the inspiration to continue, you can literally use their lives as a marking script to correct yourself as you move. The Bible says, woe to a city whose king is a child. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The absence of worthy references and models that ye be not slothful, but followers of them. Followers of them. So you follow he. The American can use the image of an individual to help you and say it is possible. Keep moving. Don't bend. That a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and still move forward. When your life is, when you are prayerless, the Holy Ghost can use the face of someone. Question, how many models are in Africa that can be used but because there was no one who had done it there was no model to create inspiration many people believed and someone did it and someone did it now you go and check the records how many people have climbed Many, many business people, usually when you find a territory that has one businessman that rises, becomes a global voice. Now he can become a reference. They can follow his footsteps. Can I tell you this? Until we find solid Christians in South Africa, in Africa, Christians indeed. There will be a very major problem. And if you have only one or two or three people, that reference is too small. You need many people.
There is a reason why Jesus came and gathered 12 people. Gathered 72. Gathered 120. He said, I am making you witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over that claim. It's amazing that in Ezekiel 37, as I attempt to round up for tonight, when God said, can these bones live? The prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophet, if I speak alone, even though the bones are hearing me, they will not come. I need you. Repeat what I have said. I am God, but I designed the system that as far as it has to do with the earth, there must be a man who will echo what I'm saying. And he said unto me, the Bible did not say, and he said, he said unto someone, this is what I desire, but I need you to make it happen. Prophesy. So this is one of the strategies for the restoration of decadence. The power of words and the power of information. The Bible tells us that in this kingdom, men live through food and words. Food and words. Prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, don't lie about it. If they are dry, tell them they are dry. You will come back to life, but first admit you are dry bones. And then he says, Oh, ye dry bones, I have diagnosed your condition, but there is hope. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I tell you this? In the midst of all the things that are happening in the body of Christ, in the midst of all that we see across Africa and society, let me bring you a word of comfort. Do not make a mistake of believing that the church is dead or finished. No. I can tell you there is a formula, there is a strategy that can bring that dead church back to life. Amen. South Africa, hear me. The church in this nation and the church across Africa is in a very defining moment. There are all kinds of shifts happening, but find rest. Jesus is still the a brother indeed. Because we would have laid aside all of these attributes of the flesh. And God would have walked and built us. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, the first two or three verses talk about God giving Jonah an instruction to go to Nineveh. Jonah was so hot and angry, he ran away until he entered into the belly of the fish. Are we together? When he came out in repentance and brokenness, chapter 3 from verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him again. Please give us Jonah 3 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Africa, that great city. God still calls a place that needs repentance a great city. Oh, come on. Someone did not see a prophetic word there. Africa, I know we have gone through a lot. Yes, sir. Politically, economically, spiritually. I know you may have been disappointed in we the men of God here and there. But can I tell you, hear what the Lord still calls Africa. That great continent. That great nation, South Africa. Now you understand why I started the way I started. If he says it, he will do it. Yes. Ephesians 5, 14. Three quick verses. I want to do something prophetic tonight. Now please pay attention. I'm going to read these three verses. Prophetically. Um, I saw Colin. He's the one I know. That my man, where is he? He's gone. Yes. You will do me something here when I read these three verses.
please permit my bias, but I want you to sing for me the national anthem of South Africa. Amen. Hallelujah. Prophetically, it's a shofar to the realm of the spirit that from house of treasures, there are bones. Did he not say, as when I prophesied, I had a sound? Can I tell you this? The blood of many have gone for the gospel. Many today have died. Some of you in ministry do not even know the history of the move of God within your region. It didn't come at a platter of gold. Go and study church history. People cried. They lost their lives. Missionaries came. Some died. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. South Africa, hear the prophetic word. Ministries, business people. Hear what the Lord is saying. Wherefore he saith, it is true that you want to see the next move of God. It is true that the bones can live, but not under any condition. Here is what God is asking you to do. Man of God, businessman, politician, awake thou that sleepest. Awake from that spiritual slumber. Don't give excuses. You will not birth glory that way. Awake. Awake. Some of you need to go back to ministry 101. Some of you need to go back to Christianity 101. And say, honestly, I've not gotten this thing right. I need to make it right. Second scripture. Very quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel. Very quickly. We're out of time. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. 3, 0, 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now, the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, South Africa, another word for you from the Lord. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me, go and read through history. Any region, individual, nation, continent that ever despises God is a matter of time. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You, one more time. You are God, say, you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Second Chronicles chapter 7, popular scripture. That has been used by revivalists from verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. Second Chronicles 7. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locust to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. Please read with me in concert. Ready? Read. If, hold on. He's talking to his people. This instruction is not to strangers. They are his people. If my people, which are called by my name, number one, we're looking at the protocol for restoration. Number one, they shall humble themselves. Lord, I accept as an individual. I do not know you. I accept the mistakes that I've made. As a parent, as a pastor, as a leader. There is one thing I know about God. You can use brokenness to attract the attention of God. 
For as long as we continue to act like a people who know what we are doing, even in the midst of our confusion, God will leave us to continue in our pride. He looks for people who are genuinely broken. I don't know about you, but I have learned to come unashamed before God. When I come before him, I don't come as Apostle Joshua Selman. That's nonsense. Your boy is still here. The one you lifted. The one you took from nothing. Oh God, I am still here. Thank God for the applause of kings and nobles. But may I ever remain that child before you? God is speaking to someone here. We are wrapping up. Humble themselves. Please give us that scripture. Number two, and pray. What kind of prayer do you think you will pray in this occasion? Prayer of genuine repentance. Not some prideful prayer and saying, God, I'm putting my hand in my pocket as your colleague. I will be waiting for you. No, sir. Brokenness. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I'm showing you a formula. Bones, if you will come back, you must be willing to listen again. It was your lack of listening that depleted you. The prodigal son, for as long as he was under the influence of his father's voice, he experienced so much. When he left and there was no more voice, he depleted till he began to feed with swine. Let's finish up. And seek my face more than money. I believe in prosperity. Oh. Don't confuse what I'm teaching now. I believe in prosperity and its ability to help to give you a life of comfort and to advance the purposes of God. But I love you more than it. Oh, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. How could I exalt money more than him? How could I exalt ministry more than him? Where were these things when the devil was almost destroying me? Can I? Listen, God is speaking to us tonight. Some of you, this may be the reason why you have not seen the power and the grace of God. You love him, but how much? Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Please, let's finish up. And turn from your wicked ways. If you pray and don't turn, you are still a sinner. The prodigal son said, How he came to himself. Africa, let's come to ourselves. If we want to fulfill that prophetic word of being that continent that will return Christ back, I'm speaking to world over. The world. But please permit my bias passionately communicating this to our dear continent. Africa was now feeding with swine. And Africa said, I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here today feeding with swine. I will arise. I cannot change myself, but I can go to where change will happen. I may not be able to save myself, but I can come to church. I may not have the power to drive those demons, but I can come to a man of God who has been graced. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. I'm showing you repentance. Repentance requires action. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the moment he was leaving his place of decadence, the father too was leaving his house. They met somewhere on the way. Can I tell you this? The greatness you are looking for is also looking for you. But he's not looking for the rebel that is at that place. He's looking for the one on his way back. Businessman, hear me. You have tried everything you know to do. It's a spiritual problem. It's not just a financial problem. You have too many friends who would have brought you out. There is a hand that you are against. Then I will hear from heaven. 
and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. South Africa, please stand. Africa Malu Paganisu Pondo Rayo Israimitandazo Yetu Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kata Branda Kata Bakotos Koto Brekateka Nekata The face of development Lord grant me the